All right, Mike Trow here, and I won't even start to uh, tell you how many times I've done this video, but this is hopefully going to be the last time. I have a lot of technical difficulties, so uh, I want to talk about this diffusion of innovation, or also known as the law of customer adoption. And um, this is probably a graph that no matter if it's the internet, if it's Google, Facebook, any sort of innovation that comes out, all right, starts from the stage of innovation to the point of diffusion. And as it says here, diffusion is the process by which an innovation is communicated through certain channels. And just last or this weekend, John Oliver communicated, communicated the blockchain Ethereum to his audience. So every time this communication happens, it becomes more real and more real and everything else. So thanks John Oliver for helping to, uh, to um, bring about the diffusion even faster. But why is everyone talking about Bitcoin and not so much about other cryptocurrencies? Because Bitcoin is just kind of like um, an asset on the, um, the blockchain, like gold or silver or, or any other thing. There's only so much Bitcoin. You can never make more than, uh, than a certain amount. And then that's it. It's kind of like there's only so much gold on the planet and you can only mine so much and it's all mathematically done. So, incidentally, in um, 2012, um, I was aware of uh, Bitcoin from like 2010. Um, I uh, started sharing the Open Innovation Framework, actually late 2011, early 2012, with uh, the founders that were working on this magazine called Bitcoin Magazine. And um, I shared with them something called the Open Innovation Framework. And that open innovation framework, in many respects, is Ethereum. Um, I'm not saying I invented it. I shared the concept of this idea of being able to launch businesses without the need of Silicon Valley, without the need of um, VCs and all these other things. And this is how you would do it through this, this business cycle. Well, a year later, they, they described Ethereum. And in 2014, when they launched their video, a lot of what they described were elements of the open innovation framework that I had described to them. Things like um, um, something I call passive crowdfunding, the act of raising funds just by sharing something. Um, also, there was stuff called um, Open Corps 3.0s, which are really decentralized organizations, and um, I described them as autonomously run via AI and controlled. They worked out the framework for all this stuff to become a reality. So it wasn't until 2016 that Ethereum actually was actually launched. So you have to look at the difference. That's the difference of, of, of seven years from the time, you know, um, Bitcoin started to the time Ethereum launched is seven years. If you pretend that in normal years it would take five years to get the sword without the Internet, the same sort of diffusion pre-internet years um, this is equivalent to 40 50 years if you look at things like climate change um, any any sort of new uh, paradigm um, it usually takes around 50 years for that paradigm to reach the early adapter stage that's just kind of the, the, the rule and it followed so this this um, seven years is a huge lead and especially now because of the ICO mania, right, that happened last year, um, it, which is still, we're still pre 2.5%, which makes up innovator. We're still pre that stage. And we're going to hit the 2.5% this year. And because of that, right, I can make a very solid guess. It's a guess that Ethereum is going to reach the $20,000 level, right? Only because... A lot of predictors on Bitcoin is saying it's going to reach 50,000 this year with the adoption of Facebook and, and Amazon and all these large corporations that are going to adopt Bitcoin into their payment models. Um, and as you can see, it's just going to keep following the chart up. Um, 2019, I'm predicting, again, it's Ethereum is going to reach the price of uh, BTC only because there is this such thing as this law of diffusion of innovation or the law of customer adoption. We know the growth is going to be this way. Now, um, 
I think the highest Ethereum is going to reach is around 70 to 80,000 because of market capitalization and other things. Um, it, it's, it's in other competing technologies. So these, so there's going to be a tremendous growth in Ethereum. You're going to see it like shoot up uh, starting this year. It's already gone up 13,000% from the time of its inception. Um, you know, Bitcoin has gone up like 20,000 or 50,000 percent from the time of its inception. So, um, but here's the deal around 2020 to 2025, there's going to be this huge market adjustment because this is all in a way kind of a balloon, just like the, the, the tech startups uh, came about. And this tipping point, and this is where I make a prediction that 99% of all tokens will fail. Um, there's so many tokens out there that a lot of hype being built. Everyone is just, you know, taking advantage of this hype from last year and launching tokens. So, for example, the way that, you know, I'm launching something called FoundUps that I started work on 2009. A lot of the ICOs that are, that are, that are uh, you know, that are doing these unique things will be able to be done via our, our you know, our infrastructure. Why I'm not worried about being first to market is because we're in the innovation stage so a lot of the technologies and everything that's going to be built and going to be used and adopted at the um, early adopter stage is being built right now so um, things like banco banco um, like um, district ox is, is has found up components or aspects to it um, and there's eros right there's other things so really it's important at this stage is to look at the technologies to adapt the right technologies um, and to allow other people so to speak do the work for you because you know it is pretty much all open source this entire platform and the other thing that's happening is the next stage of the block coin is organizations and this is why for example, I've announced something called the, the uh, Decentralized Autonomous Nonprofit Organization, Danos. Danos are a new adjustment to FoundUps, and they're what FoundUps become. So FoundUp can be any idea. But that's a whole different uh, talk, right? Um, and the reason why I'm trying to encourage folks to invest is, well, by you, if I'm right, and you put a bit of your your um, and I would tell folks only invest money you would you'd be willing to lose in Vegas, um, um, if you are a doubter, right? If you do your research on the law of diffusion innovation, then you know you may want to in, instead of investing in the stocks, put some of your money that you put in the stocks, maybe ten or twenty percent that you're currently allocating into um, into this new area. So why? Well, if I'm right, which I which I'm very positive that I am. Okay, but you can always still be wrong, right? But I'm very assured um, because of the, this law of diffusion of innovation, this law of customer adaptation. Um, I would invite you um, to turn around and invest 10 to 20 percent of your of your of your um, returns into the UPS fund. The UPS fund is a decentralized crypto fund, a decentralized crypto fund which is 100 percent backed, right, by um, all these great tokens and we are diligently going through and deciding which are the you know figuring out which are the good ones which are which aren't predominantly by looking at the teams looking at their market capitalization not only that looking at the benefit that they will provide to us through our ecosystem which is the foundups ecosystem so the fund in essence is a vehicle for launching this ecos ecosystem and this ecosystem is going to change the way startups are launched okay ideas are launched not just on the blockchain right but actually around the world um and just projects because a found up can be anything it's a it's a it's a it's an idea that solves a problem basically right and um it starts with this fund which is right in the middle uh, and it launches these things called Danos, which are circling around here that, that are all interchanging these these tokens. Um, so this is what we're launching first is the UPS fund. So if you do get a return, then ultimately I would encourage you to 
buy the UPS coin, which ultimately holds all these other tokens, 100% backed, that then uh, you know you can uh, leverage against the big the big uh, chasm that's coming in 2025, and take advantage to potential coins going up significantly more because as the enthusiasm for our ecosystem grows, so will the um, the valuation and value of our our token itself. Thanks for watching.